Today we are making my favorite Texas beef chili, but we're not using any ordinary beef. Today we're using proper Texas prepared brisket burnt ends as our protein. You're not gonna wanna miss this. Hey, I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue, and I am so excited to share this one with you. Now I've made this chili many times for our family, never on video before, and I'll put a link down below to the recipe from Epicurious that uh, first blew us away the very first time we made it. It's got lots of little steps, don't worry, it's not too complicated, but rather than show and explain everything in video, it just reads so nice. So I'll go ahead and make sure that's front and center in the description down below. The recipe normally calls for just using some regular beef, which you would sear off and then add into your stew. But today we're in the unique circumstance of having some leftover burnt ends. I know it sounds English, but what's leftover burnt ends? Well, due to COVID, we're not able to share with friends and family like we normally would. And so for a video that I've got coming out soon, where we're gonna do Texas brisket burnt ends versus some poor man burnt ends using some chuck roast along with some beef ribs. I happen to have a bounty of beef rib burnt ends available at my disposal. So today we're gonna upgrade a classic Texas beef chili and make it a burnt end chili. Let me bring the camera a little bit closer, show you how we're gonna set up for today's cook. It'll be a little bit different. We're gonna start with the dome open today. Okay, so today we're gonna to be cooking on our Kamado Joe Classic 3 using a large Dutch oven, holding up um, our oven on the X accessory ring. But for the low and slow simmering cook, I actually want a really good coal bed and not a ton of heat to start in our ceramics. If we were to start at four or 500 degrees where we would be with a good coal bed, uh, we would end up burning all of our ingredients. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start a bit of fire using some leftover charcoal for two reasons. One, leftover charcoal, I did an experiment. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, it's definitely worth checking out, but there's big differences in the BTU output from used charcoal to fresh charcoal. So I've gathered up all the used charcoal that I have added it into my basket, and we're gonna go ahead and fire that up and let all of those coals ember up before closing the dome. So we have a nice coal bed, which is gonna provide some steady, consistent heat to simmer our chili for the next few hours. Okay, let's fire it up. Okay, so we're just gonna leave that dome open and let all those coals ember up. So we have a nice rock and hot coal bed. Let's go inside, but before I forget, there's a couple steps for this recipe that are well explained in the original Epicurious recipe. So I'll put a link down below. It says I've already started ahead of time soaking some of our chilies so that you're ready to join me for this spot where we bring all of our ingredients together, start blending up those chilies and mixing our ingredients. Really great recipe, and I'll make sure I call out any substitutions or differences that we're doing for today's cook. Let's head inside where it's warm and start pulling together our chili ingredients. Okay, so for our first step, I've already soaked all of our chilies after toasting them in a cast iron pan until soft, and then put them in this bowl submerged for 45 minutes with hot water to help really soften them up. And I've got our pepper and our honey in this uh, container ready to go in the blender. Now, the recipe will call for adding salt at all the different stages. And every time I followed it to the T, the chili ends up too salty. So I'm actually just going to hold off adding any extra salt until the end, and we'll adjust that to taste. So this is just the pepper, the honey, and our peppers. So let's go ahead and get our peppers in the blender along with four cups of the uh, pepper liquid and we'll blend everything up. I'll rejoin you after fast forward. Okay, so now that our pepper puree is all blended up, I'm just going to uh, strain it through this mesh strainer and push out as much liquid as I can. And then we're going to hold on to the preserves and we'll mix that in and cook it down a little bit later. Okay, so after working around, you'll see we're left with a pepper puree paste. Now, the peppers are uncooked at this point, so they'll taste really raw, but it is a good opportunity to taste for heat and adjust as necessary. If you want a little hotter, you can go ahead and add a few of the spicier, spicier variety. If it's too hot, go ahead and remove that and adjust as per needed for your taste buds. Let's give this a taste. I think that's gonna be right on for us, so let's just set this aside. 
Okay, so next we're gonna prep our next few ingredients that are gonna go into our chili starting off with some butter. We're gonna finely dice an onion. We've got some oregano, some cumin, as well as our masa harana that we're gonna mix with uh, two cups of water and add that into our mixture. So I'll take a fast forward while I chop the onion, get it in a bowl, add some water, and we'll take all these ingredients outside. We're ready to start mixing them together to make our burnt in Texas chili. Okay, let's transfer everything outside, start heating our cast iron and assembling our burnt end chili. Okay, our coal bed is exactly what we want. We've got some great embered up coals. Let's go ahead now and install our Dutch oven on the X accessory ring. Let's go ahead and install this on the middle tier to start and see if that's enough clearance for our dome. Oh, I think that's plenty. Let's double check. Yep, lots of space all the way around on top and on the sides, that looks good. So let's go ahead now and just settle our dome to hold about 300 degrees, which I'm gonna do one finger on the bottom. And to start slowing things down, I'm gonna come to the middle point of the second and third line until we start to build some heat in our cast iron, in our dome and it stabilizes and we can bump up some more air in a little bit if we need to. All right, let's get started. Everything's preheated. I took the opportunity just to add one piece of charcoal just as I had the dome open a little longer and I think and burned down quite a bit. So I've just added one piece. But now that we've got some heat and our cast iron, let's go ahead, toss in our butter and our onions. So I'll take you fast forward, but we're gonna let this cook for about five minutes until they're translucent. Then we're gonna go ahead and add our pepper puree and cook some of the raw out of that. And then we'll start adding uh, some of our other ingredients like garlic, our oregano, uh, cumin, and masa harana. And then we'll get to the good stuff here, our burnt ends. Let me show you what we've got for leftovers. Got a couple pounds here of some burnt ends. We'll add those a little bit later. Okay, it's been about five minutes. Let's go ahead now that those onions are looking translucent and all the butter has melted. Let's go ahead now and add our cumin and we'll give that about one minute and then next we'll add our chili paste. All right, let's go ahead now and add in our pepper puree. Now this part will take anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes to help get some of that raw unfinished flavor out of the peppers. So we'll just check on that about every five minutes or so, see how we're making out. All right, getting close, let's add our garlic. Give that a few more minutes to cook down and then we'll be ready to add our masa harana, some beef broth and our oregano. Rejoin you in a couple minutes. Okay, so it's time to add our beef broth. This is about four cups. And our masa harana, just give that another mix. our oregano and we want to bring this to a boil so to help with that I'm going to drop from the top position on our divide and conquer rack right to the coals on the bottom position so this pot actually hits on the bottom position so I'm just going to go ahead and use the middle position leave the dome open add some more air and keep stirring this until we reach a boil. And then our next step is to add our burnt ends. All right, let's go ahead and add our burnt ends now and wait for the rest to come up to a boil. Okay, so looking down through our top vent here, I can see we're boiling. So let's go ahead and start to slow things down. And to do that, what I'm gonna do is give this a stir as well as move it up from the middle position on the divide and conquer rack to the top position, increase our distance from our heat source, as well as slow things back down to one finger's width on the bottom and a little tighter on the top damper. Okay, we're locked in position, let's close it up. And to settle things down, again, I'm gonna go back to about the 50% on our second section until we stabilize back around 300, 350 degrees. 
Okay, so the hard work is done. Now we're just gonna let this simmer away for two to three hours and let all those flavors get to know one another. Now you'll notice if you're following the recipe to a T, they've added a couple other things at this point, like some brown sugar and some salt. So just a couple reasons why we're not doing that. The salt I already addressed, which is I found following this recipe exactly to the letter of the law, it's come out a little bit too salty. And at the end, you're trying to then throw these big corrections at it to dilute the salt flavor. And the other reason I'm skipping things like the brown sugar is these are leftover burnt ends, which we've already done in a finishing you know, glaze and barbecue sauce. And so I think that's going to bring most of the sweetness that we need. And at the end, we're going to add a little bit of, uh, I think it's a, a red wine vinegar or apple cider vinegar. I need to double check my notes, uh, but that'll add just a little bit of brightness to this as well. So outside of stirring this every, you know, so often just to make sure there's no burning on the bottom of the pot, you can just let this ride for the next two, three hours. And the only thing you need to chop up to be ready for dinner time is if you have some red onions, I, I don't. So today I'm gonna to use some shallots along with some cilantro. And uh, another nice touch to finish it off is some jalapenos. So I do have some jalapenos, I have some shallots and I have some cilantro. So I'm just gonna dice all those up before cleaning up the kitchen and then set them aside in the fridge for later. And those will be our garnishes on top of our Texas bowl of burnt end chili. So I'll rejoin you in a couple hours when we get close to uh, do our finishing touches and do our taste test for this awesome bowl of red. See you in a bit. All right, our chili has been simmering away for three hours. So it is time for our last mile adjustments here. So the things that we're going to potentially add after we give it a bit of a taste, is some of our smoked salt. So I'm using my Morton smoked salt, which is one of my top three favorite, easy for me to say, favorite salts that I list down below. It goes great for things like this, soups and chili, because it adds a bit of that smoky flavor, but we also may need just the salt itself. Then uh, our last two ingredients in the recipe is a little bit of uh, brown sugar, as well as some red wine vinegar. And so we're gonna open it up now, stir it up, give it a bit of a taste test, see how it is for balance, make those adjustments. And then if it's good, we're gonna shut down the heat and just let it sit in the Joe for about another hour. Uh, it'll cool off a little bit, but it'll also give uh, flavors time to get to know one another a little bit better. And then we'll make up our bowl with some sour cream, some of that cilantro, and maybe a little bit of onion and jalapeno to finish. Can't wait for that part, but let's come a little closer and check it out. All right, so let's just give this a bit of a mix. It's looking really good. It's pushing off a little bit too much steam that I can get the camera close enough for you to have a really good look, but it's thickened up nicely. The beef is still holding together, but it's fork tender. I can't wait to try. So anyways, enough stirring. Let's get a little taste. I don't know if you can see that any better or not, but we've got some great consistency. Okay, so I'm glad we waited to not add salt, but it does need salt. And so I'd rather have the choice of adding some salt than trying to figure out how to remove it. The heat level is good. This is for our family. Otherwise I'd add a few more uh, of the spicy variety chilies, but I think this is gonna be great. So what will help cut that is a little bit of our red wine vinegar, as well as uh, brown sugar, make it completely family safe. And those red onions or shallots, what I'm using today at the end with jalapeno, that will add an extra little kick and brightness. So uh, if you wanna add more heat, uh, by all means, tweak to your liking. Let's go ahead and just grab a little bit of our smoked sea salt. I am gonna do the recommended one uh, tablespoon of brown sugar. I'll just go a little light on the sugar and a tablespoon of our red wine vinegar. Let's stir that up and give it another taste. So I think that's on the money. We'll give that a bit more time for all those adjustments we just made to come together. But right now, I'm really happy with where that's at. So let's close everything up, close our bottom vent, our top dome, let it hang out for an hour. We'll be ready to serve it up. All right, our Texas beef chili looks fantastic. I've plated it up and to do that, I just went and added a little bit of our shallot, some of that chopped cilantro, a little bit of sour cream, as well as a lime wedge. You can add that to your taste just to brighten it up. Let's dig in and see how we did. Grab this behind me. Hope that comes through on camera. I took a picture with better light, so hopefully you can see that. Taste test time. Mm. So good. 
I don't want to come out of fast forward. That is incredible. I'm steaming up. Got a little bit of kick. Not too much, but a little bit of spice caused me to fog over here. All right, that is just perfect. I've loved this chili for a long time, but substituting burnt ends, there's nothing that makes Texas chili more Texas than adding some Texas burnt ends. Anyways, I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you did, please let YouTube know by hitting that uh, thumbs up button and let me know by hitting subscribe to catch future videos. Until next time, I'm James from Soka Dad Barbecue signing off. And remember, don't be afraid, fire it up. Oh, I'm going in for some more. Yes, oh, so good.